Before I continue, I want to give a huge thanks to Audible for sponsoring today's video. Audible stands for, as usual, Drake is brilliant like Ed. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and more, like original entertainment from top celebrity creators and thousands of popular and binge-worthy podcasts. As most of you know, we have a baby girl on the way and I have no clue what I'm doing. Luckily, there are a ton of audiobooks on raising a baby. I'm currently listening to Raising a Baby so that I can be better prepared. The best part about Audible is that they are audiobooks, so I don't have to read them. I can just listen to them on the way to and back from work or when I have free time. They do have a ton of different categories you can pick from. Personally, I think you guys will love the computers and technology category the most. You can learn a lot about tech and I'm confident some of these will even help inspire you. With their new Plus catalog, the Audible membership becomes so much more valuable as it gives old members a chance to listen to and discover new favorites and new formats like the exclusive words, Plus music series, or even a podcast you never considered before. So go ahead and try them out for free for 30 days, you guys, by visiting audible.com slash techsource or clicking the link down below. You can also text techsource to 500-500. You're also able to keep every audiobook that you download permanently even after you cancel your membership. So once again, that is audible.com slash techsource or click the link down below and you can also text techsource to 500-500. Could this be? Is this actually happening? Our very first contestant from France, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to DICE coming all the way from Paris. Welcome to the show, my guy. So Dace is a specialized educator for autistic people and this is the setup he uses for gaming, editing and working. We got a gorgeous ultra wide monitor set up built on the IKEA countertop with a few dark gray Alex drawers for that contrast. He's rocking a Samsung ultra wide that's sandwiched by two of his XPS speakers. I gotta say, I love it when people know how to take advantage of their audio gear. Those speaker stands were an awesome choice that not only adds to the listening experience, but fits perfectly with the setup's theme. If you guys ever have the chance, try and listen to both speakers on the desk and speakers on stands at ear level and tell me if you notice a difference. Although the setup has mostly productivity vibes, DICE wasn't afraid to include some RGB from his gaming gear. The Rokat Vulcan 100 keyboard pairs nicely with the Rokat Amo Cone gaming mouse. Other than his speakers, he also uses SteelSeries Arctis 7 wireless headphones and the Bird UM1 microphone for input. But where is the cable for your mic, my guy? I appreciate you disconnecting it for the shot, but I want to see what your setup looks like in its natural state. If you care enough, you can always pick up a lightweight boom arm and mount it to the actual monitor arm itself. That way the stand is invisible from the bottom while providing more flexibility. Although I'm sure that will go against the symmetrical and clean aesthetic you are going for, but that's definitely one option to keep the cable from running across your desk. Speaking of cables, everything seems to be managed underneath the desk with the help of the Signum Rack and bonus points on adding that USB hub for easy access. Have you guys noticed that fake leaves and setups are slowly becoming a thing? Personally, I love it, if you do it right. I think integrating vines or greenery in your setup can really help make it stand out. The subtle greenery around the PC case was a nice touch and I feel like it adds this super homey vibe. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Prime the setup is a beautiful custom build equipped with the 9900K and the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti. I think what I like most about the setup is the seamless harmony between both gaming and work. There isn't too much emphasis or focus on one category. The only slight concern I have is with the desk pad, and although it looks amazing in the setup, there just doesn't seem to be enough mouse room for gaming, and I'm not sure how the mouse glides over it either. But overall, I'm really digging the vibes of this setup. Thank you guys for entering, and if you know any other people from France with killer setups, do let them know about this show. And by the way, I'm sorry for butchering your name multiple times. Up next is Michael from Vienna, Austria, and his sick double-stacked dual-purpose setup. If you don't have the desk space for a dual monitor setup, I'm here to tell you that it's okay to stack them, especially if you need to make room for some badass speakers. Seeing as you have a window behind you, I get why you took this approach, but where are your blinds or curtains? Michael uses the setup for music production, editing, and gaming. We got a 27 inch 165 Hz monitor as the primary with a supplemental 24 inch up top as an overhead. If you constantly use a top monitor and you find yourself with some neck pain, you can always try and tilt the monitor a little more at an angle for a more comfortable viewing experience. The setup is built on the dark brown IKEA mom desk with a pullout section which he uses for his MIDI keyboard. The main peripherals consist of a Black Widow Elite keyboard and the Viper mouse. 
If you guys are looking for small decorations to add to your setup, I recommend checking out these tiny fake plants that Michael is using in his setup. In my opinion, they are better looking alternatives than the fake IKEA plants and it's a nice way to add a bit of greenery in your setup without breaking the bank. I picked up a few of these to feature in an upcoming cool tech video by the way. As I stated earlier, Michael uses a setup for music production and he's got that audio gear to back it up. A set of beefy JBL studio monitors and a Razer Thresher headset hanging underneath the desk next to his audio interface. I guess while we're down here, we can take a look at the cable management. Uh, not much to see here. It looks like the cable rack is doing its job very well, no complaints. Looks like there's a PS4 in the back for some of those sweet exclusive titles, but he mostly uses his custom PC. We've got a gorgeous all white build inside the H510 Elite case. I'm obsessed with the color coordination in this PC, by the way. I think he did a great job picking out the parts for the system, but when you get a chance, I would flip the bottom two fans upside down. I know they look pretty this way, don't get me wrong, but you want those as intake and not exhaust. This is actually more common than I thought, but you always want the bottom fans in your case as intake for your system. That way you are supplying fresh cold air for the rest of your components. Nonetheless, a beautiful PC that complements your beautiful setup. Thank you, Michael, for entering. Okay, this next setup has a pretty awesome entrance, I'm not gonna lie. So Ofec is a student for electrical engineering from Israel that built this pretty cool setup for studying, gaming, software, and hardware engineering. But check out the way he gets access to this setup. There are two buttons on the left side of the entrance. The first button retracts the blinds, while the second button slides open the door. That is actually Pog. Once we're inside, we are greeted with this pretty sweet dual monitor setup that he built on a custom desk. We got a 27-inch 144Hz monitor as a main display and a 25-inch 240Hz as a secondary. And at first I was wondering why the 240Hz was the secondary and then I realized that the main monitor is actually a 1440p, which makes more sense. For peripherals, we got the Razer Black Widow Elite keyboard paired with the Razer Atheris mouse. Props on grouping up the wires together, but it looks like your microphone is directly behind your keyboard. I don't know if you use it during gaming, but if you do, that's probably annoying to whoever you are playing with, considering they can hear every single key press. If it's not used while gaming, then I guess it's fine, but I would still pick up a cheap boom arm and hook it up behind your monitors to avoid any problems. Speaking of audio, he does have a set of Razer normal speakers, but he also owns two sets of headphones. We got the Razer Kraken V2s in Mercury White and the JBL Everest 700 Elites. Cables do be managed pretty well though, thanks to the Signum rack underneath the desk, but the cables behind the PC can use some more tidying up. Remember, Velcro straps are your friend. Speaking of which, we got a pretty sweet RGB build inside the Lian Lee O11 Dynamic, packing the 8600K and the Gigabyte GTX 1080. I'm not sure if you took the picture at the perfect time, but I think one of your intake fans on the bottom isn't spinning. You might want to check that out. So, okay, first I want to say that I think what you built here is really cool. I'm getting these super cozy and productive vibes. I especially love the custom entrance you built with the remote switches. I think that's hella cool and big brain. But there are things you can do to improve. For starters, the Alex unit on the bottom has no purpose there. You know, it's great that you're using it as a stand for your sub and maybe even a footrest, but aesthetically, it just looks out of place. Secondly, I like the effort in adding some RGB lighting into the setup, but the execution just isn't there. As I mentioned before, many times you can buy these frosted channel raceways to help diffuse the LED strips. In fact, they make these angled raceways specifically for corners, and I think they'll be perfect for your setup. You can even add some lighting underneath your wall shelf, which I think will look even better. Other than that, I think this is a pretty sweet setup. Thank you, Ofec, for entering. Senna is up next from the Netherlands with this super cool custom quad display gaming setup. The way that Senna built his desk is going to be the same concept for my next dream gaming setup at my new home later this year. It is going to be wall mounted just like this, but in a slightly different way. And I can't wait to show you guys what I have planned next year. So Senna built the setup for the purpose of gaming and making videos for his YouTube channel, which I'll link down below. We got a 29 inch ultra wide in the center sandwiched by a 22 inch on the left and a 24 inch in vertical mode on the right side. However, that gap between the two monitors is definitely noticeable and I feel like it could have been avoided if you used a more flexible desk mount. And then we have a 55 inch Samsung TV mounted in the corner that's mostly used for watching videos. I do like that you grouped up the mouse and keyboard cables together before running it across the desk and for the most part it seems like you've got the cables under control. I can see you tried to tie the cables from the monitors and the TV with the switch in the corner using Velcro straps and a Signum rack on the bottom. I definitely appreciate the effort here. 
Radio is using a set of wall-mounted Logitech Z333 speakers and the SteelSeries Arctis 7 headset tucked away in the corner next to his Blue Yeti microphone. What is it with these Arctis 7 headsets? I've seen these so many times on the show. So if anyone is watching this video that has a set of speakers that comes with a subwoofer, you can do what Senna did and grab a small wall shelf and put your sub on that. I've seen a lot of people do this and in my opinion it's such a cleaner look because now you have the cable a lot closer to the top of the desk and it makes cable management so much easier since you don't have to stress about it not reaching the back of your PC. In Senna's case, the PC is actually a lot closer since he decided to keep it on the floor. But personally, I think it's a bit disappointing leaving it down here in the corner. It's not a bad looking system and you do have the space for it on your desk. Maybe it's just me, you guys, but I like to appreciate my PCs regardless of how shiny they are or how many RGB lights are in there. Because after all, I put in the effort and built the PC myself. So I like to be able to look at it and feel a sense of accomplishment no matter what. Does anyone feel that way or is it just me? I definitely love what you started here, but there is always room for improvement. I feel like there's really nothing that makes your setup stand out compared to the rest. There's no personality attached to it. I'm not saying go out and buy a bunch of RGB lighting, but don't be afraid to make it your own either. Thank you, Senna, for entering. Speaking of personality, this next setup from Vincent has the right idea. I gotta start off and say that I really like the layout of this setup. Since the desk is taking up the whole length of the wall, Vincent was given a decision. Either place the PC on the floor or find another way to keep it above ground where he can still see it. The decision to add a cabinet on the side for his PC plus extra storage was a really great idea. So Vincent uses the setup for gaming, streaming, and editing, and he does all that on both his 27-inch monitors. I love that he split the lighting on each display to match the wallpaper colors. It looks really cool this way. Personally, I think lighting can make such a huge difference in any setup. It's such an easy and quick way to spice up any setup. But if you can introduce multiple colors in the perfect areas of your setup, then that will take it a step further. I've seen some really awesome bicolor and tricolor setups that nailed the lighting aspect. Moving on to peripherals, Vincent stuck with Red Dragon gear. We got the K557 keyboard and two pairs of mice, the M711 Cobra as the primary and the M652 for backup and on the go use. We do have some audio gear as well. Looks like he's using those super popular budget speakers from Creative and we got the HyperX Cloud Stinger headset next to his PC. I think Vincent did a phenomenal job with cable management. Just look at the precision in routing those cables behind the desk. It seems like my guy Vincent studied cable management for years. This is what a PhD in cable management looks like, by the way. I couldn't be more happy. He does play on a Samsung Gear VR headset occasionally, but mostly he's slapping kids around on a sick custom PC. That's packing the Ryzen 5 2600 and the PowerColor RX 590. Looking super clean, my guy, and I'm happy you went with some PSU extensions as well. A really clean build to complement an even cleaner setup. Thank you, Vincent, for entering. And that wraps up today's episode of Setup Wars. As always, make sure to comment down below and let me know which of these setups was your absolute favorite and why. And if you guys enjoy Setup Wars, then let me know by leaving a like before you head out. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing because I do Setup Wars every single Monday. I love your beautiful faces and I'll see you very soon in the next one.